Um, my topic is mentorship, how to trail the tides for upcoming software engineers. Um, again, my name is Adamu Muhammad Dankori. Um, this is my Twitter handle, if it actually shows up. Um, and this event is organized by Emerging Muslim Developer. Um, so what do you expect? Um, my plan is to tell you what mentorship is and if you need one. Um, my journey to computer programming, there's a reason why. And some clever ways uh, to be mentored and then questions and answers. So um, I think um, um, let's start. So I like this definition because when you think of the word mentorship, you know, you, sometimes um, you, you might think of it as someone teaching you, but it's more than that. Mentorship for me is more than that. And that is why I wanted to share my journey how I arrived where I am, because what I think um, uh, mentorship is. Um, but uh, I like the way um, this source defined mentorship. Basically a mentor provide uh, guidance, motivation, emotional support, and role modeling. So it's not really teaching or telling you what to do, or sometimes is I tell you how I arrived at stuff. So I will tell you how I, like I can tell you, for example, how I go to Yobe State, okay? And then you can tell me, like, let's say in the future, you need to go to Yobe State. Then you can say, Adamu, um, I want to go to Yobe State. How do I go to Yobe State? So that is also mentorship, uh, role modeling. Um, so um, do you need a mentor, right? That is the big question here. Do you need a mentor? I truly believe that anyone, regardless of your profession, um, need a mentor. And whether we admit it or not, at some point, we have a mentor, but not knowing that he's a mentor, right? For example, has, uh, has any one of you asked someone, how they did something, right? You know, what did you buy? Like, what can I buy? Um, you know, hey, I, I see your camera, right? What kind of camera is it? Can you tell me more about it? And then they can tell you, hey, okay, you need to get this, this type. So we have had mentors or like in our lives um, constantly. Um, now, mentorship has one characteristic of being a long-term um, or maybe some specific uh, period. Um, but the idea here is we get mentors all the time. Because if we want to do something, sometimes we don't start, we ask people. So anytime you see yourself asking people how to do things, some guidance on how to do something, that is mentorship. Um, and one key important thing to realizing that that is mentorship is you get to take advantage of it and you get to also call yourself a mentor because you have done that to someone. I don't know much about your lives, but I can almost bet that someone in your life before has asked you for something. It could be a family, a friend, or even a stranger somewhere in the market. Hey, how like... One of the takeaway that I really want us to do is to know that we are all mentors. Literally, we are all mentors because we're women there. Now, specifically, um, this is about mentoring uh, future software engineers. And maybe you don't have to be a future software engineer because if you are here, you are a software engineer to me. So I need mentorship. Everyone needs mentorship. And we are here just to remind ourselves that we are in that um, 
like we, we are all mentors and we are mentees. Okay, about me, um, I'm a father of three. I have two boys and a girl. Uh, in that picture you are seeing, that is the girl. She is um, less than two months old, uh, so she's pretty young. Um, I currently work uh, at a company called Source Allies in the United States. Um, I also live in the US, in the state of Iowa. I enjoy philosophy, ancestry talk, football, and table tennis. Now, the ancestry talk, like one of the things I like to know about people is, hey, you know, how do you, like, you know, what is, just, I want to know about you, your parents, where you came from, you know, like, for example, my dad uh, is from Yobe State, but his lineage came from Bauchi. My mom is from Jigawa, but her lineage came all the way from Niger. So I love hearing things uh, uh, like that. So that's uh, that. So I would like to talk to you about how I started coding. Okay, and the reason is, if I tell you my journey, maybe you could pick up something that you are going through right now. I could say, Adamu, how did you do this? And that is the purpose of why I'm sharing my journey. And that is kind of, I, I, I hope you are seeing that I'm kind of plugging in that mentorship, right? If I tell you what I, what I have done, if you are about to go into that process, then you know someone who has gone through it. And then you can have someone who can men mentor uh, you in that regard. So this is not what I did in university. Okay, I, I graduated in university, but my coding journey proper started in uh, uh, in ending 2018. And I began with free code camp, like some of you might. And at that time, I have a seven-old uh, baby, our first son, with, with us. I lost my dad the following month. So a lot going on, right? Uh, and again, the reason I'm telling you this, you know, it starts as an encouragement. You know, some of you might be going through this or might have gone through this. You know, you're like, you know, Adamu, how did you overcome this? What did you, what helped you? You know, having a baby and losing someone. How did you not lost track of what you want? So, again, I hear more about me. Uh, that is the kind of thing I want to focus on. So, some of the things I use was Free Code Camp, <laughs> YouTube, Udemy, and Google. Right? Google is like the everyday thing, and this is something that uh, uh, you all know. I uh, some of you. I might have come across what I've used before. Uh, tools that help me. I got, you know, having a computer, right? So uh, if you want a mentor in the software engineering field, you know, you want to be, you want to learn how to program. It's good to have a computer. Um, an internet or data, at least at the beginning, right? A supporting family, like uh, like I've shared with you, we had a seven months old baby and I have my own work. I was working in a lab. So my wife, my partner had to take charge taking care of the baby while I do this. This is really important, important, especially if you're in my situation, right? A supportive work. Um, when I, back in 2018, when I was at the beginning, um, I happened to be in, a, uh, in an environment where the work was supportive. Why? Because they allowed me actually start helping the company from my newfound hobby, you know? Mm -hmm. So I asked them, hey, I'm working for you as a chemist, but I like to code. Do you have anything that I can do to help out? And I ended up um, a, a software that cuts the time, that cuts a particular time of doing a task, literally from an hour to like 
10 minutes or five. So they were very helpful, which means, right? What it means is I was using, I was learning to code at work because I couldn't learn it. Because at that time, what they had, I had to learn the technology they had to do this. So sometimes you could do this, you could try it. If you are not working currently in the programming profession, talk to your work. That might be an opportunity. So now these are some of my side projects. Some of them, uh, most of them are live and some are no side projects. Um, the reason I want to share with you with this is, again, if you have something that you see that I have done and that you want to do, then you can talk to me. And that is the purpose. That, that is kind of, again, um, the, the theme that I want us to get uh, in my story here. Um, so like most of you, when I started learning, like six months after I started learning, I started asking people, hey, I can make you a website. Like there's no better way to learn than actually doing, which uh, uh, which you most of you know. So that was when I started freelancing, um, and then um, and then that's kind of how. So that's that mindset of okay, I need to keep I need to keep I need to keep doing something uh, leads me to some of this uh, sites project. Okay, that's a duplicate. Now, how do you find a mentor? right? So um, you can host events like this. You can host event, right? Invite someone and they will tell you something that they are doing currently or things they have gone in their lives. I'm like, wow, I'm interested, you know? So you could find a mentor that way. You can attend events, right? If you can't host, you can attend. Like this, some of you you know, thanks to uh, Malin Tajuddin for organizing this. Uh, I am an attendee, you're an attendee, right? Um, so you could find a mentor through there. Um, you could find one on GitHub. Uh, what I mean is, let's say you are interested in a particular stack, okay? Let's say the JavaScript ecosystem, right? You could go to GitHub and just search JavaScript and filter by people. And then GitHub will show you kind of people that have JavaScript uh, uh, repos or something about JavaScript in their profile. And you can contact those people. You can go through the profile and say, wow, this, is, uh, this, this, this person has done something. Um, I share that and I want to contact them. I want to do that. Or this is currently what I'm doing. So we share something interest. Um, uh, some clever ways to get mentorship. Uh, find your favorite coding educator. This is what I mean, okay? Um, right now, when I started coding, there's this guy called Brad on YouTube. When I found his YouTube, when I found his YouTube channel, I just fell in love with his teaching. I really, really like his teaching. And I literally just, kind of forget about others and concentrate on Brad. When he had any Udemy courses he had, I have it. I just go in and buy. So I will attribute Brad as my virtual mentor. Like he, had, he doesn't know me. He doesn't even know I exist. But I have followed his teachings and I really like it. So in a way, I don't know. I, I just feel like He's my mentor because his coding style has stuck with me up till now. And I still use it. So find something, somebody you like, and just kind of concentrate on them. Like just uh, consume if you like them, right? There are many things you could like about them. Their life history, kind of the way they teach. Then consume um, their, their, their teaching if they have it, right? If they have everything you need. So you could do that based on interest. Like I said, if you are interested in Java, right? You could go to GitHub and search 
um, any interest, go to GitHub. GitHub is a great resource for things like this. Now, should you become a mentor? You are already mentors. Now, do you want to become one in software engineering? Um, you know, that, that is the question. Um, one way, like sometimes, right? Like I, like I said, I guarantee you, you've been asked questions before by your family, brothers and sisters, parents, friends, strangers, right? But what I'm trying to get here is the more you share about your journey in software engineering, the more people will know more about you and then they can refer to you. They're like, wow, Marlon Tachutin has been, has been teaching kids how to program. Well, I want to start teaching kids. Who do I meet? Marlon Tachutin, because you know it. Now, which means you need to find ways to share things about you, right? <laughs> You could have a blog, you could have your own YouTube channel, you could attend events, you could speak in events, you know, things like that, um, so that you could be useful to someone else. We, the prior speaker, right, Malin Mikhail, talked about, like, he's a front-end uh, developer, right, at, uh, at, at a particular company. Like, so if you are interested in front-end development, right, you know, you've known someone. So sharing about you really helps. And there are many ways, blogs, YouTube, you know, events uh, and things like that. Wrapping up, uh, I want to thank the Emerging Muslim Developer for inviting me. And, uh, but, you know, in particular, Manan Tajuddin, the convener, uh, for inviting me. And for all of you who tolerated my slow internet at the beginning and kindly listen uh, to me. I feel honored uh, to be here. Um, yeah, questions or comments. Um, I'm here in the background while I allow uh, Alimot to continue. Um, uh, I give you the mic, they say, so thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Brother Adamu Dankore, thanks for the inspiration. Thanks for sharing your journey. So we'd like to take questions and answers now. Please let's um, add our questions to the um, comment section. You can drop our questions. Let your questions keep flowing. Or if you have, if you have anyone that has a comment, an addition, a subtraction, you can raise up your hand to unmute your mic so we can have you. Let me check the comment section if you have any question yet. Oh, someone asked if the webinar is being recorded. Brother Tajuddin, are you recording? Yes, yes, it's been recorded. Let's drop our questions. Now you have the chance to ask any question from Malam Mikhail, from um, Malam Adamundan Kore. This is a great opportunity. So let's keep our questions coming. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamualaikum, salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, my name is Olawi uh, Ablakim. Okay. Uh, um, I'm a mechanical engineer. I work with the government. Okay. I really appreciate uh, my brother Adamu and brother Mikahil. 
and the organizer of this uh, wonderful uh, webinar is highly inspiring. We thank Allah for this opportunity as a Muslim because this kind of a uh, uh, program is not common among Muslims. It's a kind of uh, eye opener and a kind of encouragement for the Muslim that are coming up in the space of uh, software engineering. Uh, I'm happy and for this uh, uh, for this uh, project. My question is this: Somebody like me, I am a busy type. I have a passion for this piece. I can just like Brother Damas rightly said. Let me tell you my little uh, journey yeah. coming to this uh, tech space. I'm just a beginner. I'm not really. Uh, I'm not a software engineer yet. I'm just a kind of a enthusiast, somebody that I want to learn to become a software engineer. I I register my kid for the for the code class, and uh, eventually when he when he comes back home, I discover I don't have any contribution to make whenever he's doing his, his uh, assignment. I now say I can't continue this way. I have to like uh, uh, get some at least try to know something about this uh, code they are talking about. That was what prompted me to go into learning Python then. And in the course of my learning Python, that was what really inspired me to fully when I discovered the tech space. And I say, let me continue to learn more about uh, this course. And in the, in the course of that, 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 that was when I met uh, Brother Judin. Now, I'm meeting my guys at the top, Brother Adamu and Brother Mikahela and others, and, and Hajia that's according to the program. So now, my, my question is this. What is the advice of Brother Adamu and Brother Mikahela for somebody like us that have uh, families and we are working with government and we, are, we have business to do. How can, what are the advice for us to be able to achieve this, uh, uh, this uh, because what is involved in becoming a software engineer, I think it's something we want to really dedicate more time to. What's your advice for us? How can we achieve this? Okay, our brother has asked uh, a very good question, like transitioning into software engineering, when you have a very busy schedule, how to go about it? So, the question is for our speakers. Brother Adam, you can have the floor. Yeah, thank you, um, Alimat. Um, that is a really good question. So, like I've said, when I started, I had one child, and right now, there are three. So, time is really, really hard. But this one helped me, honestly. I prioritize this. And like really uh, what I think is, right, there's no any other second way to do this. You literally have to say, okay, my family, Allah first, my, you know, family second. And then the third, software engineering. And that is really it. So that means... No going out to play football, less going out to hang out with friends. Like, whatever you do, it has to be less. I get a little bit of time. Sometimes my time that I get is from going from a living home to go to, uh, to, go to the market to buy stuff. But I use that time to listen to podcasts, to even be listening to YouTube. I'm not kidding you. So that is one way. And then secondly, if you are in the office, sometimes we play music. Instead of playing music, put a YouTube video. Like you don't even have to. Just hearing it. Surround yourself every time with this. So we need to prioritize and then slide in some of this learning when we are doing stuff. So that's what I would say. That's a great question. Um, okay, um, thank you, um, Brother Adam, thank you very much. So for me, like, my contribution to that question is, um, 
it's something that I've been through before, and um, I know that it's very difficult, especially having a job to start. You know, if you already like you've already started and you already know that your direction, your bearing, that's okay. But for someone that is starting, so my advice for you would be, you know, maybe if you can. For a start, maybe you should start with an hour daily and make it consistent. So if you can have one hour daily in a week, that's like seven hours in a week, then you keep tracking of it. And then you increase the time based on your availability and based on, um, you know, because I believe that when you do this over and over, it will get to a point when it will become easier and you, you tend to fall in love more and you can actually squeeze time out of that, you know, the normal government job that you're doing. And another thing is, as a government worker, I believe there are still some time during the work hours in court that you can actually, you know, dive fast to coding. So if you can do that consistently until you are able, like, it has to be timed. For example, you may say you want to do this for six months or for a year, like you know the best when it comes to your timing. Because the, the end goal is that you want to get to a point when nothing will come in between your software engineering journey. I mean, where you want to reach in software engineering and whatever you are doing that is bring, <clears throat> sorry, that is providing like daily, daily um, you know, bread for your family. So the moment you are able to reach that, well, okay, in the next month, I should be able, inshallah, to get to a point where I want to reach. Then maybe you have safe enough to actually, in such a way that when you leave that job, it will really not, you know, affect you much so that you can now focus like 100% in your software engineering skill. So again, for a start, you can dedicate some hours per day. And the key to that is you have to be consistent. Even if it is just an hour, make sure that it's on a daily basis. You don't skip it. Then set a target when you want to stop that one hour of a thing. And then while you are you are working towards that target, ensure that you you are, can have something to fend for the family and you can now concentrate more on software engineer. So you get like a role, inshallah. So may Allah make it easy. That's what I have to say on that. Thank you for the contribution, Not brother. Not here. Mm -hmm. So we have some questions in the chats. And the first one is engineering and N certificate. Thanks. Certificate. So then we have to go first. Generally, you can go first. You can, you can go first. It's fine. Okay, so actually, for me, I think it depends on the type of who you are. But generally, for certification program, I mean, to end certificate, you may start with free co campus, just like um, Stadam mentioned. You go, you can do that, and depending on your track, if you are, for example, like you want to be like a software, um, what's it called, like a web engineer, so you have HMS CSS certification that you can do that when you certificate. You have JavaScript course that when you certificate. And you can actually enroll in Udemy or Udacity if you are looking for a paid fashion, like you can pay there, complete some course and hand your certificate as well. However, why that is okay, like I believe certificate is very important, but it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be like the primary goal of enrolling in such program. Like it should rather be like what can you learn like how uh, what 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 will the program give you other than certificate how will you make you a how will the program make you a better programmer you get in whatever track you have chosen in the tech space so that's what i have to say to that yeah absolutely i will just tag uh, along what uh mikhail said um i started with free code camp um so let me kind of um, take you, let, 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 let's, let's do like a bird's eye view. Bird's eye view means you are on top, you are viewing uh, like something down. So you have a general kind of idea where you are looking at. Uh, the, the reason why I think that is important is this, for example, when people ask me, when I talk to people about this, uh, software engineering, 
when they ask me, I don't tell me more. I want to learn. So what I do by is I tell them, okay, if you don't have any specific entry point, and I'll explain what that means, you don't have any interest in IT way to start, but you are just interested in coding, start doing web. So like most of you know, there is web, there is mobile, there is desktop, there is embedded devices. There are several ways, several platforms that you could code. So I normally start telling people to learn web. So free code camp, uh, like brother Mikhail said, you can go there and earn certificates. Um, so by the time you learn web, you know, then your interests begin to, you know, probably expand. Okay, maybe now I want to do mobile. Maybe now I want to do desktop apps. Or maybe I want to be making a software that is embedded inside a device, like a phone or like a microwave or like robots, right? Uh, but definitely that web first, for me, at least that's what I've gone through Um and then with the certificate question, uh, you can get it to uh, through free code camp. So you get to learn web and also get to learn certificates, and then you can expand later. Okay, thank you to so our speakers for doing justice to that um, question. So the next question is, how can we develop great problem solving skills? I, okay, I can start with that. So that is the really old added question. But there's something that I, so right now I have this WhatsApp group that what I do is time to time when I have chance, I send people things like just general things that I I wish I knew when I started programming. Um. What I also tell people when I tell like beginners uh, that want to go into this field is everyone has like a way they learn. Some are really fast. Some, it take a while, right? And anywhere in between. So one thing that I like, so I always tell people that. So if you are having problem solving like coding questions or trying to like, if you think you are lagging behind in terms of um, like solving skills in coding, like I would say, okay, that is a good concern, but that shouldn't be the major concern because we all learn differently. Some of us are slower and some, sometimes like some, some of these things, you can't really do anything about it. Like they're inherent in us, right? That's why, you know, parents, like uh, people that specialize in infant development, they will tell you when your child is little, like you need to give them all they need to develop fully. Mm -hmm. And some of us have lacked that. So the, the damage is done at, at some respect, so to say, we can't do anything about it. So, and if you focus on something that you can't help, it's basically wasting time. So what I tell people is, if you feel like you, you're having trouble grasping concepts and solving things, uh, do not. Take your time, learn. Me, uh, Brother Mikhail mentioned something important. Keep absorbing yourself. Like, if you want to learn something, if you read it first or you want to learn how to do something, keep doing. Like, let it... This is a game of reputation, uh, repetition. Let it keep repeating. Sometimes I just go to a favorite YouTube channel like Brad. If he releases a video, I just keep listening. Like I'm not doing anything. I just keep listening, listening, listening. And over time, you just get to know how to do these things. So to summarize, I have spoken a lot is concentrate on learning if it means repeating, at some point it will make sense. And that is really the key. The more you do, the more you do, the more you do, the more you do, you reach a point where you know how to solve it. 
Now, you might, you and I might not be that person where once we have a question, we get to it, we solve it quickly. That's okay. Some of that you can't help. You literally cannot do anything. Um, so, but some of it, but over time, it will click. And that is what I want to pass. Keep doing. You reach a point where you know how to do it. Um, and that is really, really important. Thank you. Honestly, that, thank, thank you very much. I think that's just it, like consistency and like you just have to keep doing it over time, over and over. Like only then it will skip. I, I remember like there, um, for some of us that knows um, say only five day like is like one of the um, you know managers when it comes to HNG and Zuri, it will tell you that there is no way no matter how dull someone could be if you code consistently for three years if it's like a tech stack that you you choose you will be good at it regardless you'll be good to the extent of getting um employed like you code a particular language for three years non-stop so that's just it that's it and i hope that the person that asked question is not comparing himself to maybe some of his or her peers because that can actually be very intimidating. So don't compare yourself with anyone as long as you are putting in the work consistently, like you'll be fine. So that's it. Yeah, thank you very much. So don't compare yourself with anyone. Focus on your own growth. So we have two questions left here. Please, as a newbie in tech world, wishing to become a software engineer, where can one start from? Well, I think this question has been answered indirectly, but I'll still give our speakers like the floor to go ahead and answer the question. Okay, I don't, absolutely. I think we kind of I, 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 we kind of touched about that pre, uh, previously. Like, if you're not sure where to begin, start with web. So, web is any application that runs on the browser. So, websites. So, start from the web. And as you go into that rabbit hole of programming, like never ending mm. hole, then you will start to pick interest. But it is okay for you not to know if you want to be a mobile or desktop, many things, right? So pick a particular area and start. Uh, a free code camp is a great, that's what I tell people now, free code camp. If you are not sure, start from free code camp. So yes, uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. And let's have the last question. Said, I would like to ask our speakers if they have ever had any moments or challenges that made them doubt if they could ever achieve their goal of being a software developer and how they came out of it. All right, Mikael, I didn't hear you, so I'll go first. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Um, I, I love this question because I think whoever you are, if you are learning code or anything, any profession, you will get to this moment where, like, just things are not working well. One of those moments is when you are applying for jobs. The rejection, the rejections. If you like, if you don't internalize it as a positive, you could absolutely get discouraged and say, I am not good enough, period. My, my journey here ends. So we I have, I know for sure I have been in that moment. So during job applications, and um one other thing that time to time, I just feel like, am I even smart enough to do this? Is solving data structure and algorithms. Mm. You know, like this things, and sometimes they come during job interviews, mostly actually during job interviews, like I will see a question, I'm like, how do I even start? So now I haven't <laughs> solved this problem, but this what helped me. When I started learning program, basically in 2019, that uh, towards the end of the year, that 2009 applying for jobs. And it's just rejections after rejections 
I am not kidding you, I fell down. The only thing that I like that helped me is I was already like I have, I like these things. I like IT. That's what really helped me. Now, fast forward back in 2013. Back in 2013, I started this website project. So I already like it. So when I decided that I want to switch my career in 2019, that rejection really kind of, it hit me once, I accepted it. But because I like it, I resume tomorrow. So really like it if you can help it. Right? If you can help it, like it. Two, to be honest, I feel like when you are trying to learn a particular tech stack or maybe it's data structure and algorithm, if you don't feel like you are learning them, like you feel like it's not entering, repeat. We've mentioned that. Keep, keep repeating. And secondly, maybe, truly, maybe you, like the teacher teaching you, it's not doing you justice. So I used to be a teacher, right? This is my philosophy in teaching. If you ask me to teach you something and you don't learn, it's not your fault. It's me. Like, never is it the student's fault. So if you are a learner, you want to learn web dev and you're not learning, it's not your fault. Literally, it's not your fault. Um, I got frustrated with learning data structure and algorithm. Let me share with you something. That literally, I have to resort to, resort to this. Do you know what this is? This is a Russian door. So it's closed, but when you open it, you have the same thing inside. You have the same shape. Wow. So I have to figure out a way to learn data structure and algorithm. And, you know, I haven't solved it all, but honestly, even if I forget what a linked list is, if tomorrow you wake me in my sleep and say, Adamu, take a linked list. I want you to traverse through a linked list an output, or I want you to find something in linked list, or I want you to find a value in linked list and add something in there. Like, I will just take this. I will take, I will, I will go back into this. So I'm showing you this to tell you, maybe it's time to change your teachers. It's not your fault. Um, so that is the second thing I want to mention, and I will stop here. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, actually, before I answer, I would like to actually add one question for um, Mr. Damu. Like, what if you don't have a teacher? As a newbie. You are muted. You are muted. Sorry. I'm muted. Thank you. Yes, if you don't have a teacher, well, thank God for... So if I want to learn how to be a surfer, the guy that, the, the, the water sports, mm -hmm. I need to find place that, that people hang out, yeah. right? So from there, you know, if they are passionate about surfing, they will organize events like this. So that is kind of mm -hmm. where you get to know that mentorship thing. Yeah. So you are interested in surfing, find surfing place. I'm sure, you know, many people can yeah. go online So. Anyways, uh, this is something we know, but that's how I normally go about it. Okay, I actually ask because of some of us like that might think of ah, I don't I don't have a, I don't have someone I could run to or something. I don't have a teacher, so that's why I asked. Thank you very much. So in response to the question, I, I honestly there has been in fact I can't even count the number of times that I felt like I don't think I'm I'm capable of this. And there are several factors that contributed to that. First is the fact that, just like you mentioned, I am also not from, from an engineering background. In fact, when I was in secondary school, if anybody give me, or if any university give me like physics admission or mathematics admission, I would rather rewrite the jam than the, taking the, the offer. Like that, that was my mentality. And I don't even, I didn't see myself becoming an engineer until after university. I never touch code. I never code for once throughout my university days. So, but the point there is when I start, I also started like 2019. That was when I started coding. And during this period, in fact, like let's say the first year is like we are just parabolating. We don't even know what to do. 
until one thing happened. We met, I met a mentor. Let me just put it that way. And it is that mentor that shows me the, the beauty in, in software engineering. And even at the point of seeking job opportunities, seeking employment, like I was so used to rejection that anytime it happens, it happens, it happens. So let's just, let's just move on. If I can't cope with it, I would rather maybe, I watch football, like that's what I used to he's off my, my tension. So I would rather go out and, and watch football. And even after getting the job, after getting the job, because like my real official, like like serious official job that I got is actually this NEP. I've worked like, like as a um, freelance or like a, a part-time developer for some companies until I got to NEP. So what the point there is, it got to a point like the second month that I joined NEP. And what was the problem was that like the code structure that they, they have then, it was using like old, old fashioned of React, which is like class-based component. And I never use class-based component to learn React. So when tax dropped for me, I will first have to think of a way to convert what I want to do in like a pure functional component before I will now think of a way to implement it. Sometimes it's very draining. And at some point I felt like, I don't think I can do this. And what I discovered there, what I later discovered is that it's not like I can't do it, but I really don't give learning what I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't prioritize on that. And until I was able to do that, that was when my sovereign, soft, because it was a real sovereign then, <laughs> starts coming to ease. So in this case, the way I would say like I was able to escape through this period of feeling like will I be able to do this thing is that I figure out what to learn in order to beat the challenge. So sometimes you don't want to focus on the challenge itself. Rather, you want to focus on what are the ways of solving that challenge. Then what is the best out of these ways to solve a challenge? And I believe if we get to a point to be able to reason in that way, we will all be like a great software engineer. And that's what we are still figuring out still. They even some of us. And I think that's the that's one one um one thing that differentiates like a I don't want to use senior software engineer and junior engineer, but let me say like great engineer and someone aspiring to be great engineer, like the willingness to learn what needs to be known in order to solve a particular problem rather than forcing oneself to actually solving the problem. So I don't know if I communicate here, but that, that's the idea. And Thanks. sorry, uh, Alima, just to quickly put in there, like this feeling never goes away. Mm -hmm. Like the feeling of something comes on, I don't know, oh, maybe I'm not too good at it. Like not just coding. So mm -hmm. not just coding. And I, for me, I think it's everything else. Yeah. So which means, one way uh, that we can do this is to make peace with it. If I know that it's always going to be sunny outside and I don't like the sun, I just need to make peace. That yes, it's gonna, it's gonna, there's going to be sun outside and I'll live peacefully. Yeah, this feeling comes in, it, it, it doesn't finish. So thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Mr. Adamu and Mr. Mikhail. We really appreciate your efforts. You've done justice to the topics. You've done justice to answering the questions. Thank you very much. May Allah reward you. So let's move to the next thing on the agenda. Our time is fast spent. So the next thing is the summary. Brother Tajuddin, can we hear from you? No, mashallah, jazakumullah khair. Uh, I really appreciate our speakers uh, for doing justice to the topics. Uh, and the, the lecture is so scintillating, educating, and really eye-opening. So I believe everybody has learned something. Personally, I've, I've, I've gained a lot from the lecture. So I think, um, in summary, we should all open to the fact that at the point in time, we need somebody to monitor us. So we can't have it all by ourselves. 
but we just have to you know just face it that's that's the point we face it we face the reality so there are some things that are bigger than us and you shouldn't, you shouldn't be surprised that some things are bigger than you just accept it that this thing is bigger than you so all you need to do is just find a way to you know go around it and that's where mentorship come in you know uh you can actually uh reach places by you know riding on the shoulder of giants so uh I would also say that in the software journey, perseverance, determination, and consistency is one of the tools that you will be needing to become a, a good uh, software engineer. And just like our speaker said, uh, Mr. Adamu, you just have to know, know what you are doing and be consistent about it. And this same point is also emphasized by uh, Mr. Mikhail when he was saying just put in a constant hour. If you are taking one hour per day every day, in a week, that's, all, that's already seven hours in a, day, in, in a week. And with this, I believe you are, you are going to achieve something. So uh, I want to encourage everybody again that just let us, uh, we should try as much as possible to ensure that we are learning something. Be accountable. This is very important. So, uh, thank you, everybody, for attending this webinar. Uh, I'll be looking forward to see uh, each and every one of us in our next uh, webinar coming up in the, in, the, in, the, in the end part of the year. And again, uh, I would also like to thank uh, a special thank to our uh, two speaker. I was not expecting <laughs> a lot of this stuff. Like I was really impressed with the lecture. So thank you very much, Sas. And for our moderator, I really appreciate that. So I think we we, we spent uh we first spent our time already. So this this lecture is stipulated for just one hour. Um, because I think the lecture is interesting. So we spent more than one hour already. <laughs> so uh, I think um that's all for now. Uh, thank you, everybody. So, moderator. Okay, thank you very much, Brother Tajudin. Yeah, thanks to everyone for attending this version, which is like the amazing, the amazing version of this program. So, see ya in the next um, section. And we can have our closing prayer now. So he's giving us the closing prayer. Let me let me close and pick randomly again. <laughs> um, brother Nudin Tajudin, please give us the closing prayer, a very short one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this brand new. Oh, brother Mikai, your mic is not mute. Sorry for that. Or maybe you want to give us the closing prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Nurudin Tajudin, are you with us? Please give us the closing prayer. It's like Brother Nurudin Tajudin is not here. Oh, he's here. No, he's not Subhanaka Allah, who Yamdik, Shadala, you are the aunt, as a Funka, or to me. Um, Jazakum Lahiran to everyone, to our speakers. Jazakum. The program has officially. Jazakum Lahiran. Thank you.